When it comes to SLS, what is the first thing that crosses your mind? A formidable moon rocket by NASA, perhaps? No, for most of us, I believe, its exorbitant price is the most outstanding point of the SLS. More terribly, what's troubling is that this doesn't get humanity a base on the moon or even a small crewed Mars mission. Yeah, this is also the real reason makes Starship so much better than the SLS. Discuss everything about this in today's episode of TechMap. But before we begin, our team extends a warm welcome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. With that in mind, let's jump straight into today's episode. NASA made history in 1969 when Apollo 11 sent humans to the moon. And now, the Space Launch System is the backbone of NASA's new human spaceflight program, Artemis, which is currently aiming to put humans back on the moon by 2026. SpaceX has equally lofty goals. The company is testing the Starship, a fully reusable rocket capable of sending humans to the moon, Mars, and beyond. But first, SpaceX plans to use the Starship to send Japanese billionaire Yusaku Maezawa and a crew of specially chosen passengers around the moon. This mission was originally announced in 2018 with a 2023 launch date. However, Starship has not yet been allowed to conduct the next orbital flight test by the FAA. The first attempt ended in flames. Despite their different goals, the SLS and Starship serve surprisingly similar purposes, even more surprising when you consider how NASA plans to use the Starship to land the astronauts on the moon. As these two rockets shoot for the moon, here's how they compare. Firstly, to be fair, we need to talk about the important specifications, including their size and power, Celes is slightly complicated in that it is expected to come in various combinations. Its first variation, Block 1, will stand at 322 feet tall and weigh 5.75 million pounds. When it launches, Block 1 will produce 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust, which is 15% more than Saturn V produced. It will be able to send more than 27 metric tons or 59,500 pounds into orbits beyond the Moon. In its Block 2 configuration, SLS will produce 9.5 million pounds of thrust and will be able to lift more than 46 metric tons or 101,400 pounds to deep space. Starship is set to be taller than SLS standing at 400 feet with its cargo and booster stage combined, according to SpaceX. Its super heavy booster stage will be able to provide 17 million pounds of thrust. Orbital capacity figures publicly available on the NASA and SpaceX websites aren't directly comparable. For example, NASA says SLS will be able to launch 46 metric tons to deep space, while SpaceX says Starship will be able to launch more than 100 metric tons into low Earth orbit. This is complicated by the fact that SLS is intended to go straight to its destination, while there are plans for Starship to reach Earth orbit refuel via another starship, and then continue its journey, which would boost its range and payload capability. However, an important aspect, the SLS is not a reusable system. The starship, on the other hand, aims to be SpaceX's first fully reusable rocket. The Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy had an expendable second stage. The capabilities of starship and SLS may be comparable, but the pace of their progress is starkly different. CLS funding started in 2011, three years before SpaceX broke ground for its spaceport at Boca Chica Beach. The WSLS flight occurred last November, a 25-day-long mission that sent an uncrewed Orion capsule to lunar orbit and back. With the first Starship launch, SpaceX's effort has nearly caught up with NASA's heavy-lifting counterpart. Next, and most importantly, how much does it cost to launch? Well, the SLS won't come cheap. NASA has spent $11.8 billion since it began developing SLS in 2011. After many delays, the huge rocket debuted on November 16, 2022, when it launched NASA's successful uncrewed Artemis 1 mission to the moon. An additional $11.2 billion was allocated in the White House's 2024 federal budget request for future work on SLS from 2024 through 2028. 
NASA plans to use these funds to develop core stages, rocket engines, and other components for SLS, ultimately to increase the vehicle's efficiency as well as the amount of cargo that can be delivered to the moon for Artemis. However, the baseline costs and schedules for this future work have not been established despite GAO's nearly decade-long concerns, according to the report, which was put together after interviewing NASA officials and reviewing the agency's current activities, CELL's documentation, and future plans. NASA does not plan to measure production costs to monitor the affordability of the SLS program, the report states. In late 2021, a report by NASA's Office of Inspector General showed that NASA will likely spend a total of $93 billion on the Artemis program between 2012 and 2025, and that each SLS launch will cost about $4.1 billion. A large chunk of the budget was attributed to hiring contractors in every U.S. state and more than 20 similar partners across Europe. As Musk declared, even NASA recently admitted that SLS is unaffordable. On the other hand, Starship promises to be billions of dollars cheaper than SLS. The Super Heavy Booster is designed to be used repeatedly, while SLS rockets are good for just one launch. In 2019, the White House Office of Management and Budget estimated the cost of an SLS launch at more than $2 billion, while each Starship launch will cost about $40 million. The company will have spent $5 billion or more on its Starship vehicle and launch infrastructure by the end of this year, according to court filings and comments by the company's chief executive. Finally, the design ethos guiding SLS and Starship couldn't be more different. NASA builds space vehicles to assume perfection and then tests them to prove it. SpaceX builds many prototypes, testing them to their limits and often beyond. Tanks burst, rocket-powered craft explode on failed landings, and things catch on fire. The hardware in today's flight was Booster 7 and Starship 24 serial numbers that identify the vehicles as born-to-die testbeds. It's a completely different philosophy, trying to get it right the first time perfectly versus doing something quickly to learn as fast as possible and converging on the right thing, says former NASA astronaut Garrett Reisman, now a professor of astronautical engineering at the University of Southern California and a SpaceX senior advisor. SpaceX is designing vehicles that you can rapidly prototype, he says. If serial number 10 blows up, you have serial number 11 waiting in the wings. Just keep moving and keep learning. This is fine while building spacecraft, but that mentality must shift when it comes to flying with humans aboard. Can you have a culture that rewards rapid decision-making, tons of risk, and it is fine with failure but then ramp up the vigilance when the consequence of failure is high? Reisman asks. The trap that SpaceX has to guard against is, can you dial it up and dial it down appropriately? After all, when SpaceX finally tests flies and produces a reliable version of Starship in the next few years, it will disrupt the global launch industry. Previously, the limiting factor for what one might do in space was cost. At a price of $4.1 billion per mission, the SLS and Orion embody this concept. When Starship delivers, it will change the fundamental question behind our exploration program from what can we afford to do in space to what should we do in space. And that just wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you and we look forward to seeing you next time.